Jack Dorsey is quitting Twitter and it is time to celebrate, folks. Or is it? Mr. Reagan. Last year, Dorsey and his censorship czar, Vajaya, went on Joe Rogan and fielded questions posed by both Rogan and Tim Pool, who both did a great job of pushing back against Jack and Vajaya's insistence that they were innocent of targeting conservatives. I was so impressed with this episode of Joe Rogan that I actually made three videos breaking down each of Jack and Vajaya's claims. And let me give you the short version. They lied. They lied and they lied and they lied. That was their entire strategy in dealing with that interview. Honestly, I'm not even sure why Jack even agreed to do the interview. I mean, it was like he was trying to create this illusion of transparency while still censoring conservatives unfairly. I mean, it was weird and it just made him look like a lying piece of crap. That interview, I think, was a big mistake. So you might think that Jack stepping down is a good thing and that we should celebrate, but no, sadly, it's a tragedy. And I'll explain why in one moment. First, I have to tell you something. Right now, stocks are at an all-time high. The economy is roaring. Houses are selling and a weak interest rates are at zero. And the government just printed $5 trillion. What could possibly go wrong? Meanwhile, consumer confidence has hit a 10-year low and inflation hit 6.8% with parts of the U.S. seeing rates as high as 8%. Something is not adding up. So what can you do? You can play it safe. Putting some of your assets into precious metals will keep your money away from the volatility of the markets and will protect you from inflation. Investing in precious metals will let you sleep at night. This month, Noble Gold is giving away a free America the Beautiful solid silver five ounce coin with any qualifying plan that you start. So talk to an expert at Noble Gold and they'll run you through your options to keep your money safe. No pressure, no hassling, no call centers, just a chance to speak to somebody who knows what they're talking about. And how refreshing would that be? Start by calling 877-646-5347 or visit their website at noblegoldinvestments.com. So Jack stepping down from Twitter, which by the way, I'm not sure why he didn't do years ago, he's a billionaire. Go do billionaire things, dude. Don't waste your time censoring conservatives and lying about Hunter Biden's laptop and kicking Donald Trump off your platform. I mean, what a waste of time. But whatever, leftists be crazy, yo. But finally, Jack has come to his senses and he's thought, hey, why am I even dealing with this crap? Why can't this be somebody else's headache? And so he's given the company to another guy. The problem is that that other guy is worse. The new Twitter CEO is openly racist against white people and very clearly does not believe in free speech. His name is unpronounceable, but I'll give it a shot. Parag Agrawal. Parag Agrawal. Parag first name, Agrawal second name, apparently. Parag Agrawal once tweeted, if they are not going to make a distinction between Muslims and extremists, then why should I distinguish between white people and racists? Okay, now I'm going to break down why that's a horrible racist sentiment, but first let me address Twitter's defense of this tweet. Twitter has defended Agrawal by saying that this was a joke from The Daily Show and that he just copied and pasted this as a tweet. But let's have a look at that clip. But guys, you're just, you're, you're, you're just feeding into this. Why don't you try and change people's minds in, instead? Well, John, if they're not going to make a distinction between Muslims and violent extremists, then why should I take the time to distinguish between decent, fearful white people and racists? Okay. <laughs> Amen, brother. Wait, what? Is that... Did you... Now, maybe I just don't get it, but from where I'm sitting... That's not a joke, okay? This is a political statement masquerading as a joke. Notice that the crowd gives the obligatory laugh, but then cheers for the joke as if it's a profound statement. <laughs> Amen, brother. Because that's what it is, it's a statement. Now, now, I watched this entire comedy segment and there were a lot of jokes and a lot of them were genuinely funny. Parag Agrawal could have quoted any one of the hilarious jokes in that segment, and they were genuinely funny. I mean, a lot of the jokes were genuinely funny, but he didn't. He did not quote from any of the other jokes in that segment. He quoted one thing from that entire bit, and it was not a joke. It was a statement. And as I said before, it was clearly perceived by the audience as a statement. And then, by the way, 
when he quoted it, he quoted it totally out of context, and he did not present it at all as a joke. This was simply presented on Twitter by Parag Agrawal as a statement that he believed to be true. There was no conditions on it or anything like that. He just made that statement. And here's my point. When you post a quote that is in fact a racist statement against white people, it suggests that you agree with that racist statement. It doesn't matter that this racist statement was expressed under the pretense of comedy. It's a racist statement. It's not a joke. Now, with that said, let's dissect the statement. Again, the statement reads, if they are not going to make a distinction between Muslims and extremists, then why should I distinguish between white people and racists? This sentiment, to me, represents a bizarrely delusional perspective. Now, the guy who first said this, he's... He's not just talking about extremists generally. He's talking about Islamic extremists specifically. And to that, I say this. Literally everyone distinguishes between the ordinary followers of the Muslim faith and Islamic extremists. And this is evidenced by the term Islamic extremist. <laughs> we have a term for them. And this isn't some esoteric term used exclusively by the intelligence agencies or just by Democrats or something like that. No, this is how literally everyone refers to them. Sometimes people say Islamic terrorists, whatever. The, the point is we use appropriate terms. Now he is of course suggesting that it's white people who make no distinction between practicing Muslims and Islamic extremists. And that belief, the belief that white people don't make this distinction, well, that is a stereotype to stereotype white people in this way, that is what is racist here, right? So even if it were a joke, which it is not, that's the setup. That's not the punchline. And so the racist bit isn't even actually the joke. It's, it's something that he's assuming to be true as the setup for a joke. Now, if I were to say that all black people are criminals, and so insert punchline here, that would still be considered racist. A racist assumption being the setup for a joke does not absolve me of expressing the racist assumption. It's still racist. Unless, of course, it's obvious that I either don't believe the racist assumption or, you know, that I'm ridiculing the racist assumption, something like that. But neither of these things are true in this case. Quite the opposite, in fact. They're truly is a belief on the left that white people are all, or at least mostly, racists. And this stereotype is just as insidious as assumptions like black people are all criminals or Muslims are all terrorists. And it's actually even more insidious because it's so widely believed. Over the past couple of decades, there's been an almost universal acceptance by those on the left of the idea that white people are, in fact, racists. This is a huge problem in America, and it's led to a lot of of inappropriate demonization, both generally and specifically. Look at what happened with the Kyle Rittenhouse case. That turned into a whole race thing when race had literally nothing to do with any of it. So then, after besmirching the entirety of the white race, Parag Agrawal's quote tweet suggested that perhaps he'll start doing what he literally just did and fail to distinguish between white people and racists. You literally just did that. By suggesting that white people fail to distinguish between practicing Muslims and Islamic extremists, you are failing to distinguish between white people and racists. So you, you don't need to ruminate on doing that in the future. You're already doing it. Hypothetically, that could be the joke in itself. It could just be a very intellectual joke. But, but I don't think so. I don't think that the guy making that joke or the guy quoting the joke, the so-called joke, I don't think either of them realized the irony of the statement. Anyway, this is the guy who was chosen as CEO of Twitter, a man who quote tweets racist statements. Well done, Jack. Great choice. But it gets worse, because if you thought conservatives might get a fair shake after Jack stepped down, oh no, oh no, no, no. This guy once stated in an interview that, quote, our role is not to be bound by the First Amendment, focus less on thinking about free speech, but thinking about how the times have changed. Great philosophy, dude. Don't worry about what has worked in the past. Focus on the fact that times have changed. We don't need none of that free speech crap anymore. It's 2021, time to move on and censor the crap out of people that we disagree with. And if you think, well, maybe this guy won't be that bad. The first thing that this guy did as the new CEO was to declare a new Twitter rule. <laughs> the rule is, this is real, 
that you can't post photos or videos of anyone without their consent. Public figures are an exception to this, but nobody else can be in a photo or a video without their consent. Now, this is an absolutely absurd rule. It's a rule that one, can't possibly be enforced, and two, will disqualify the vast majority of non-selfie pictures and videos posted to Twitter. A guy I happen to know called Count Dankula observed that even a vacation shot of the Eiffel Tower would have to be removed under this rule. It's clearly insane. Another Twitter user named VSHTEEK, T-E-E-K, underscore Esquire, underscore PhD, pointed out that any video by Project Veritas would be in violation. And, you know, I think that is perhaps the reason for this rule, right? They don't like Project Veritas videos. They don't like stuff like this. There's another channel, another account on Twitter, which will be highly impacted by this. They're called Libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok posted a tweet in recognition that they would, in fact, be targeted by Twitter using this new rule, and it would effectively destroy their account, which is one of the most popular accounts on Twitter among conservatives. And this account, Libs of TikTok, they essentially just post TikToks and other insanity that is posted online by the left. In fact, I've started using them as my primary resource for my weekly meltdown videos that I post on my Mr. Pagan channel. But, you know, these leftists are posting these things to the public themselves. That alone should indicate consent. But that's the thing about Twitter. They don't care about that. They don't necessarily follow their own rules. And that's really what I think this new rule is all about. I don't think that they want to protect anyone from having their likeness posted without their consent. I think that this is just another rule that gives Twitter more discretion to and more illusory justification for banning conservatives from the platform. I'm absolutely convinced that this rule will not be used blindly. This won't be applied universally. This rule will be used as a kind of sniper rifle to pick off conservatives. It's just another weapon in the Twitter anti-conservative arsenal. Now, why do I think that? Because that's how every other rule has been used by Twitter so far. I mean, it looks like we're probably all going to be stuck in timeout on Twitter for the foreseeable future. Now, a lot of you guys will say, well, this is just a sign that we all need to move on to more conservative, friendly social media platforms. And to that I say, no, I don't want to just speak to conservatives. I am, of course, very much looking forward to the full launch of Trump's Truth app, but I actually want to interact with leftists. I, I don't want to exist in an echo chamber because that's how you become just as crazy as the leftists themselves. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not so. Good night. The destiny of man is not measured by material computations. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. There's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space, which whether we like it or not, spells duty.